Hi, my name is Zhang Liu, X Flow Ninja. Currently thinking about what my new nickname would be. Uh, give me a hint down in the comments. This video today is about calling CDS a web API directly in Microsoft Flow or in Power Automate. So let's get started. How do we talk to uh, CDS Web API directly? And for those of you that have never seen a CDS Web API, CDS Web API, that's really the name of it. Uh, there is whole documentation based on where does it start. It is actually, it is also old data REST service. Uh, there is a whole bunch of operations available. You can create entities on the CDS. Um, this will create an entity uh, in the accounts entity. Um, you can retrieve update. There is execute batch, so you can input, you can batch. There are Postman APIs if you want to talk to it, and a whole lot of reading metadata. Now let me quickly show the CDS that I want to show you. So in the solution, we created a um, a solution called Minecraft, and uh, we created an entity called a mob. It represents a skeleton or a zombie that's coming after me. And in the in the mob, this actually I wanted to give a shout out to Eliza Benitez, uh, who helped me put this entity part together because I'm really new to CDS. So I make sure I had an expert looking over my shoulder. So we created a mob and in fact we added one field and I'll show you how it works. You basically say uh, mob. I'm, got, I'm not actually going to create it because it's already here but I'll show you how I go about doing it. We create option set. So this is kind of like a, a list of choices. Uh, we created a new option set. We call it mob status options. I believe it's gonna winch that name is already taken. And so on. And then we had alive and dead. So alive and dead. So now uh, on our mob we have a mob status column. And um, if I go back to the Minecraft solution, there is a mob status option. Okay, it had alive and dead. Um, in the CDS, these values have a underlying value. If a few more, you see, because it's a custom option uh, option set, these numbers are fairly high. So that's the value of this underlying, uh, I guess, the key value pair. Alive is this value, and dead is a different value. Now, inside a flow, there are no easy way of reading this. We come back here, and we're going to start. Uh, firstly, um, if you don't know what your CDS uh, instance is for your current environment, you could just do um, this my environments. Yeah, let's try that first. Um, so this would be called info CDS demo. Let's get this thing. Copy that. Put it in here. And let's have a look. Um, I have four environments, so we want to see. That's a preview one I was using that for testing. Don't want that. That's another preview. I have a lot of previews. Uh, that one's my demo. Let's not use that. Let's just use my default. Down here, there is this instance URL. We need this part. Okay. So this, um, let me just put that in the compose so I don't lose it. Here we go. CDS URL. Yeah, API URL. That, that's the endpoint dummy, don't forget. Okay. Now to connect to CDS, uh, we have to use this special action. It's called invoke with HTTP with Azure AD and we're gonna use uh info HTTP request. Okay, this is a premium action. Before I go any further, I want to show I had I came up with this idea and while I was searching, I came across Alex's uh, blog post about using fetch XML in the flow, in Microsoft Flows. In the flows. Hmm. And he goes through the steps of how to set this up. Okay, so I want to give credit to uh, Alex for coming up with these steps. This is more a video presentation and also he uses this to call uh, fetch XML. 
um, you see here is using the fetch XML endpoint inside the uh, web API. Um, I won't. I will today. I will just use it to fetch some entities and option sets. So uh, we'll do a slightly different demo. But I do want to show that Alex uh, web page, and I'll put this top link in the comments. Uh, this is where I basically had to read. Okay, this is how you go about doing it. Now there's a few more trickery here. Firstly, when you create this info HTTP request, if you have never done it before, you will not get this screen. In fact, I've done it several times. Uh, you will actually most likely get this screen. Okay, if you have never created a HTTP with Azure AD, you'll get this screen. Now, if you have created this before, but it's connecting, say, to Microsoft Graph, then you may have an existing connection here, but it is actually talking to Microsoft Graph and is not talking to CDS. So in that case, you have to create a new one anyway. Tricky part here is then uh, because the connections by default shows your name that you're logged in as, it's very difficult to differentiate which one you switch. So it's uh, pretty annoying. So there's a little bit of trial and error to try to get Make sure you got the right one. Uh, but once you set the right one, then you know flow will not switch it around. But yeah, this is kind of annoying. So one of these is actually Microsoft Graph. Next one is Power BI, and this third one is, um, in my case, uh, CDS. But let me just go through the whole step from the beginning. So say you've never done it before, or you're not sure which one it is. You just want to do a new one. Do a new. And you're gonna get this. And it's gonna ask you to the base resource URL and then the Azure AD resource URI. Um, in the case of CDS, they are both the same. You take this one, okay, paste that in here and paste that in here. Same one. Don't need the trailing backslash. Okay, that's that's all you need. And then you click sign in, it will get a consent dialogue. It will say, Hey, we want to sign in as you to talk to CDS. Uh, this is not my first time, so this is uh, gone through, but otherwise you will see a permission dialog. Now in here, um, batch API, in fact, we're going to do maybe a few quick examples. Really, it's just API slash uh, accounts. Let's start with this one. Now, I don't really have accounts. I'm just going to do... Um, that, but I'm gonna do a bit more. I need actually that bit in the front. And actually, I don't have accounts. I'm just gonna do so solution solutions. Okay. And if I test that now, because I add a new connection, you can't do a previous run. You have to do a new one because it's gonna first figure out. Oh, you got a new connection. That's what this is doing. So previous run, I only had that connection. See, now I need to get this one. Okay, we're going to go OK and run. Technically, I don't really need this one anymore. I only use this to get the um, URL of our site. And here we see the re data returns. Okay, ta-da, let's put that out. Uh, let's do another JSON. Okay, so here are all the solutions inside the CDS. And if I actually look for Minecraft, yeah, here we go. See, that's the Minecraft solution that I created earlier in the day with Eliza. Um, yeah, that's the Minecraft solution. In the work that I do building Power Studio and Power Clarity, I read a lot of APIs. I read uh, Flow APIs, I read SharePoint APIs, I read Graph APIs, and I also read CDS APIs. So just juggling between these APIs, getting a good feel of what they look like, uh, also, you know, if you want to know what solutions are deployed or available in your current um, uh, in your current uh, CDS environment, this is a way to read it. You could say basically, give me all the solutions that's there, and I want to see. Um, you know, um, not sure. It's a it's a it's a published or it's a created. So so that solutions. That one's a good start. 
and then I uh, wanted to go to the next one. So uh, we can copy and paste this. It's super good. See, because I made a new one, it's now make the new one here. Uh, I might just go and delete it later. I've already got one. I really don't want any more. Anyway, gonna copy and paste that, and we're gonna paste this. And the next one I want to do, and I've actually forgotten what it's called. It's called something like. Let me try, try that. So working with options. Oh, here we go. Yes, this is a good link. So here, um, there are APIs. So this is again the web API. It lets you create option sets. Uh, I actually only want to retrieve them. So let me do this one. Copy that. Uh, come over here. Okay, so this is our first one. Let's just give a nicer name. It's for solutions. This one is called Global Option Set Definitions. All right, let's go and have a look. Have a look at what it's and this one we can just run with previous. A little bit quicker. Let's clicking to get started. Back real quick. This is an extremely large data. So if I click this, this is why it's not shown here anymore. If I click this, it's it's this really large file. Now. There are many, many option sets that default and built in. I'm only after my Minecraft one, right? So if I look for, say, oops, what's it called? Mob status. Here we go. Mob status options. Yep, there it is. I think that's as far as it goes. Let's copy that. Let's come over here, make a new file. It's really strange, but I actually quite like reading APIs. It's machines trying to talk to humans. Um, kind of a, it's nice looking at APIs, looking at well-designed APIs, uh, well-designed property names. Um, you know, they don't really lie to you. They just tell you what they know. Anyway, my commentary about life and talking to humans and machines. Next. Um, every API has a API ID, so this metadata ID, and I want to copy that because um, if you go back to the documentation, you see you can specify just one option set. You don't have to get all option sets. You can get one option set by their metadata ID. So if I come back here, change this, put that in a bracket. And run that again. You see this JSON. So let's pull that out. Many, many JSON files. But this one's a lot smaller. So really what we have is here, we have the mob status, which is a choice of alive and dead. And really we have the alive value, which is this, and the label. Um, and then here's the dead value and the label. So we value and the label. Um, here is really just the, the metadata regarding the mob option. So I don't really care about those. So looking at the JSON, we start at the JSON rule. There's the first property called options, which is an array. Uh, let's do this. So we use the select method. Select is like an array map. We need options. Okay. And um, we need definitions like so. So body definitions, Christian mark operator, uh, options that goes in here. Then we need two things from here. We need the value. And value is super easy, it's top level. So value, and that's gonna say basically item. So for each element in the array, we want your value. And then the second one, is the label now those are localized labels which may have an array i'm gonna basically cheat and use this and because it's an array the json path for this is more complex i'm gonna use the user localized one which is just one label okay so this is a label as it will be for me uh, so what's that option label user label label that's a complicated path. So label, 
gonna be um, for each item label and then there's something here and then there's label again copy that and the thing in the middle is that one okay so that goes in there so we have item label dot user localized label dot label and we have item value and these are the two okay um what else do we need to do i think we should just run this oh no let's make it pretty let's have a look um uh, html So if you have select the nice columns, you can always throw into HTML just to print it out. You can leave it all on automatic. Uh, you don't need to specify any columns because there's only really two columns passed out of the select. So let me run that. And you'll see that fetches all the option sets. Sorry, that fetches the Minecraft option set. The select picks out the two fields from this JSON okay understanding how the item path works so you can pick out the two values one is more deeply nested one is there at the top level so you pick them out that's what select does and then um turn that into a html table so you see the two value here so um in your flow uh this is a way to dynamically read CDS data sets and there's a whole bunch of stuff on CDS that you can read solutions entities Option sets uh, You can read and write you can do you can do batch batch operations um, Yeah, lots of fun stuff. So let me uh, stop this video. So this is base. This is the basic idea if you want to talk to CDS via web API which unlocks all the all its secrets to you um this is a way to this is a way to basically create that connection connect to CDS and uh, here's some documentation links on how to get started uh, these are all documented on uh, Microsoft Docs um, and uh, you can use flow to quickly try this so uh, good luck making these flows and I uh, want to make more videos in the future so uh, subscribe and like this channel and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.